This is the HoloLens 2, a mixed reality device made by Microsoft. I've been working with this device for quite some time and would love to give you a short introduction. So you wear the HoloLens just like you would a baseball cap. And as you put it on, the HoloLens starts scanning your environment. And not only in your environment, also your hands. Right? And this is useful for hand tracking. So you can see in this way the 3D model that the HoloLens 2 overlays on top of the real world. And it uses this 3D model to place all the holograms inside of the real physical world. So we can bring up the main menu by tapping our wrist, and this will bring up a floating menu. And basically this is a version of Windows that runs on HoloLens 2 and is completely holographic. So it has a browser, I can go to, for example, the Microsoft Store, where I can download apps for this device. So it's HoloLens 2 apps, it's not like you can run like iPhone or Android apps on this. They need to, need to be specially designed for HoloLens and HoloLens 2. Right, and these are just 3D windows. And I can dock them to the wall like this. Maybe bigger or smaller. And other people wearing HoloLenses could then also see, you know, this view of the world. Um, could be a PowerPoint presentation, could be something else, right? I want to show you some interaction examples that the HoloLens 2 has. And there is a, a set of interactions that you can use to develop your own apps. And they've made a, Microsoft has made a toolkit available that you know, allows you to build your own mixed reality apps in 3D. And this is sort of a showcase of different functionalities. And we're going to go to hand interaction examples. And here we'll see some 3D objects, which you can see through the HoloLens. And I can reach out and I can pick them up. And these look like 3D objects to me, right? And I can use two hands, scale them up or down, put them somewhere else. They'll stay, they'll just float in midair. There's a little piano which I can play. And there's sliders interaction. These are just, I mean, they, they change the color of the sphere. And of course that's, you know, and they're very useful. But these are all the building blocks you can use to build your own apps. There's even some physics, so we can, if I pick this bottom one up, the other two stay on top of it, and they sort of uh, like this, and I can just stack them, right? Oh, okay, well, that's how it goes. And you can use all of these different interaction modalities to place your own 3D objects, so not a cheese, but maybe a car or a a building or whatever you have, a, a ship, right? And you can see this hand tracking. It basically generates a 3D model and overlays it on top of your hand. And this 3D model is then used to make sure you can pick things up. So let's do a quick tour of the hardware. So at the front of the HoloLens you've got two screens which are see-through. And then above that, you've got these sensors, which are cameras that point in different directions. And there's an infrared camera here as well. And there's some other cameras here, here. And they do this reconstruction of the 3D space you're in. Then you've got some speakers over here, which are not the highest quality, but they're great to hear voices in you know, Skype sessions, that sort of thing. And then on the back, you've got a big battery pack. Um, and it's both the battery pack as well as the main uh, compute unit. So the CPU and the GPU are in here. And this is a great choice because the weight is much more balanced here. It really, it really, it feels like you're wearing a baseball cap, to be honest. And this is really different to the first HoloLens, which is this one, which was very front heavy. So the most of the weight was concentrated like at the front. And there was only this nose brace, like this one, that sat on your nose. And after about half an hour, it would get really heavy. It's really, uh, 
uh, really quite uncomfortable. And this one is really comfortable. It's got this nice foam pad that sits on your forehead and it's got, you know, this doesn't even sit on your head. It's at, you know, at the back of your head. It's really, the form factor is really cool and it's really quite light. It feels quite light, even though I think it's the same weight as the HoloLens 1. So you build apps for this thing using the same technology as you build video games. They're called game engines. And there's two main ones, Unity and Unreal Engine. And these game engines, they, you, they, you know, they support 3D out of the box. They've got storytelling, interactivity, good graphics. It's all, all you need to develop apps for these devices. So it's, it's really quite different to developing apps for like iPhone or, that, or Android or that sort of thing. And although it's a great device, it does come with some limitations. Um, like the field of view isn't, isn't huge. Like so the, your holograms get, get cut off a little bit. Like there's, a, there's only a, a, an area in which you can actually see your holograms. So you, like you don't really see them over here because the screens aren't that big. Uh, it's, it's, the field of view has increased much, is, is much, much better on this device than on the HoloLens 1. Uh, but still it's, you know, uh, it, it's still not perfect. Another limitation is the processing power. Um, this device basically has the processing power of a mobile phone. But it needs to do all this holographic computing as well, so there's not much left for actual applications. Um, that's a shame because you need to really optimize your applications for them to run on HoloLens 2. Or you need to use some other services like um, what Microsoft calls remote rendering, where you sort of offload the rendering, so the, the heavy computations to a cloud service and then dynamically stream the results back in. It's really fancy and really cool. Uh, but of course, a little bit more difficult than just creating an app for the device. And then there's the hand tracking. It's still not perfect. I mean, it's it's great, but it I think it lags behind a little bit, like it's a little slow. Um, and of course, it's amazing that this works in the first place. Uh, but I just hope that Microsoft sort of optimizes this algorithm a little bit more, so it feels a little bit more direct. Um, and then I think the last thing is the price. The price point for this device is uh, upwards of three thousand euros. And I'm not saying that it's sort of too expensive for what you get. Um, but it does back the question, you, you know, you do need to find a use case that justifies this price tag. Uh, and there are many uh, use cases, luckily. Um, there's lots of manufacturing where you can, you know, do design reviews with you know, five people around a table with a virtual mock-up of a car or an apartment building or, you know, what have you, engine. Um, it's used in training and simulation. Uh, where, for example, assembly line workers wear these things because they need to use their hands all the time. And relevant information is overlaid on top of the actual, you know, engine they're surfacing, like unscrew this screw, this is the temperature of this uh, pipeline, that sort of thing. So there are use cases, but you do need to, you know, you need to think critically about, you know, is this use case, uh, does this really need a whole lens too? Uh, or, you know, are there other alternatives, which I can use, for example, phone-based AR, can I just use my phone and hold it up and, you know, use my phone as a window into this other world? Or can I use virtual reality? Um, for example, buy an Oculus Quest, which is, uh, I think, a $500 uh, dollar device. Um, so there's a question of, you know, does, you know, is your use case, has your use case enough impact to justify the price tag of this device? But other than that, this is just an amazing device and really, really cool to develop for. Um, you know, you can wear it all day, so it's really something you can truly explore this sort of spatial computing paradigm with. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, you know, how this is going to pan out in the next years and what more we can see from, from the other large companies that release these sort of glasses. If you've got any questions or, or ideas or comments, um, shoot me a message, um, leave a comment, and, uh, and uh, I'd love to answer any, any questions you all might have. Um, and thanks for watching.